What is going on everybody? So I am at Tank Nitions, the aquarium shop, and we got some amazing fish in stock right now. So I wanna share it with you guys, take a tour around the shop and show you what we have. So let's go. First up, we have a yellow headed jawfish. Two of them actually, one back there. And you can see how inquisitive they are. See how he's kind of coming up to the camera. He probably thinks he's gonna eat. Uh, these guys are a great addition to the tank. Not just for the fact that, you know, they got that beautiful white body, which you don't see a lot of white fish in the saltwater hobby. And then that bright yellow head. Um, they also just are, like I said, they're very curious fish. They live in the substrate, they burrow, they make little tunnels and holes. And uh, I think they add tons of personality, uh, different dimension to your aquarium. But you wanna make sure you have a lid on your tank for sure because these guys are jumpers. When they get spooked, they will go like flying through the air. Now look at Buddy. This is a cling fish, Caribbean style fish. And if you look underneath, they have like kind of like a little suction cup, which helps them kind of uh, stick onto rocks and things like that. Not a shy fish, as you can tell. Pretty smart. He knows what I'm gonna feed him. That's why he's way up at the front of the tank which I love, but I, I think they're just really cool looking. They look almost like a Pleco, um, or even like a Stingray or something like that. Really cool movement there. Hardy, hardy fish, eats about anything. Goes along the, the bottom of the tank, you can see right here, kind of like a vacuum cleaner, just sucking up whatever little foods are, are there. I really don't see these guys a lot in the aquariums, but if you come across them, highly recommend them, uh, highly recommend getting them in your aquarium. Now let's talk about clownfish. Here we have a pair of clowns, some snowflakes. Now everybody talks about the perks and the ocellaris, but nobody really talks about this clownfish right here. The skunk clownfish. These guys are underrated. They tend to kind of take to an enemy better than the ocellaris or the perculus. That's another reason why I think these fish are um, worth having. And they come in orange and like a pinkish color. And you can have multiple in an aquarium. They seem to get along better with each other than the Ocellaris or Perculas, where you can just really have two in a tank. You can, you, we've, keep, we've kept these guys in like groups of like five to 10 and they've been fine. And these just came in, Canary Blennies. Uh, one of these is definitely gonna come home with me once it's done with QT. Right now they're all in their QT tanks, getting their medications. Uh, these guys are in chloric and phosphate. I want to make sure that they have no parasites on them, no cilius, no uh, sicknesses or anything like that. But look at that bright yellow on them. I love that fork tail. And I mean, these guys just came in, but look, they're already coming up to the tank. They're very, you know, social fish. They don't seem to be too scared. Uh, they get pretty so you know, they get pretty long. I think they get like five or six inches or something like that. Uh, the yellow is really bright on these guys which cuts through if you run a lot of blue light, you definitely want a yellow fish because it really stands out. Fun fact about these guys, they have fangs and they are venomous. So they use that for defensive purposes if another fish is messing with them. So they can also handle their own in an aquarium as well. So in this tank, we have some juvenile box antheus. When they get bigger, they're gonna look absolutely beautiful, especially if they kind of uh, start to morph into males. We have four of them in here. Again, they're in quarantine. Uh, we're treating them because antheists are known to have uranema and other parasitic diseases, but these guys are doing absolutely great. And uh, the box antheists gets a pretty good size. I think they get like five, six inches. They get pretty big. Uh, and they add a ton of color in your aquarium. They're active swimmers. They're really hardy, great eaters. This one seems to be the dominant one, the one that's right up front, which will probably end up turning to the male. See how he's kind of fighting off the other fish there? Definitely runs the tank here, probably shooing everybody away because he thinks he's gonna get fed. He wants to make sure he gets to that food before anybody else. But on the cheek there, you can see streaks of like pink and purple. Yeah, this fish is gonna get really pretty once it becomes an adult. Then over to the right, we have a tile fish, which this guy's almost done with QT. We'll be going to a customer's tanks pretty quickly. Nice, long, slender body, red stripe down the side. Uh, a bit shy, you're not gonna see this fish as much as you like to, unless it kind of gets warmed up. He's already left us, so that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, tile fish, look into them. They are uh, a great addition to your tank if you're looking for something a little bit different. 
one of our more popular fish to the bottom there, that purple fish, that is the mystery wrasse. That is one of our more popular fish that we sell here at the store. People love them. Active swimmer, although it's a bit shy right now. Of course, I put the camera up and he's hiding. He's peeking his little head out right now. But uh, definitely uh, active swimmer, great color. But when they do get bigger, they tend to go after your inverts in your tank. So if you have any shrimp or anything like that, it could be a problem. And he's not coming out, is he? Come on, say hello. I don't know what's going on. Like all of a sudden, the, all the fish are camera shy. Everybody was out just a second ago when it was time to eat, but now everybody wants to act all like they're too good for the camera. But anyways, uh, they, as they get bigger, the mystery wrasse does become a bit aggressive. So keep that in mind if you are shopping for one. And oh my gosh, this one, this is like one of my favorite fish and I am going to get myself one for my aquarium at home. Powder blue tang. Now, I mean, what else is there to say? That beautiful North Carolina blue with that bright yellow uh, fin right there. I, I mean, uh, just an absolute stunning fish. Uh, these guys are known to be ick magnets or they're known to get sick or not do well in aquariums. This guy's going through quarantine, so we're gonna knock whatever he might have out. You just wanna make sure he's going to a clean aquarium. Uh, if you feed him good and you put him in the right environment, they, they do pretty well. I've never kept one myself. I know a lot of people get frustrated trying to keep them. They don't have much success, but uh, I enjoy the challenge and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, having one of these in my tank. So there's uh, a decent size one. I say like a, a, a mid-sized one, lower to mid-sized one, but his color is great. Then we have this little guy over here, which is a little bit more translucent. Lucent. The color isn't as good. The yellow's still vibrant, but uh, just not as nice as the other one because he's a little bit smaller, but uh, also in quarantine and doing unbelievable, eating like a champ uh, and not scared at all. Like I, he thinks he's gonna eat. As soon as I put my finger there, you can see he's gonna go to the top of the aquarium because he thinks he's gonna eat. And he has to be, you know, uh, assertive because he's in there with a, a blue jaw trigger and a melanaris wrasse and these guys don't play when it comes to food so he's got to get in there and mix it up with them if he wants to eat also have a whole tank of dispar antheus right here oh man this is another fish i would love to have in my tank i recommend if you have a tank large enough uh, probably over 125 gallons get four or five of these guys uh great uh shoaling effect in your in, in your aquarium they kind of swim together add a ton of color active swimmers uh, peaceful for the most part amongst them uh, with other fish amongst themselves they will squabble a little bit for hierarchy purposes but i i love antheus i just they're just one of my favorites next tank we have are two bristle tooth tangs and we have a white tail and just your regular i think it's like a blue eye everybody goes crazy for the white tail ones so what's great about these tangs are, number one, they don't get super big, so you can keep them in a you know decent sized aquarium. You don't have to get anything too massive because they you know they stay relatively small. But if you look closely at their mouths, they kind of like they look like uh, you know puckered lips. Uh, they they feed off detritus in the tank, so they do a great job cleaning your tank. That mouth acts, you can see right there, uh, that mouth acts kind of like a vacuum, and it's just sucking up you know decaying matter, detritus, and things like that. They do a great job. Uh, cleaning up algae they're definitely a, a good utility fish and people really like the white tail because that white kind of stands out in their aquarium gives it a bit more color as opposed to just the brown there but very popular fish here because a lot of people use them to keep their tank clean look at this giant green chorus wrasse holy moly a belly on this one so uh, real quick, this one came in, it was not eating, was in terrible shape, was barely swimming. We got him in here, we dewormed him, we got him some medications and he's just made a complete uh, 180 and is doing great. Not scared, uh, ready to eat. He just ate and he's already ready to eat again. I'm really happy with the turnaround this one did. On to the next tank to the left, we have Chromis. Everybody knows about Chromis. Great fish, just be careful when you buy them. They have tons of issues. You wanna make sure you get them healthy because they can just blow up your tank if if uh, they're sick. I'm gonna do a whole video on Chromis and dealing with them down the road. But for now, yeah, I, I recommend uh, Chromis, but only if they've been quarantined. And then let's say hello to our residential seahorses who have been um, doing their little mating dances the past couple of days. So hopefully we can see some babies pretty soon. That'd be pretty cool. And uh, there's two more in the belt, two more down here. 
Now, I think we're gonna be taking these back. We have, a, uh, these actually came with us for the summer while school is out. They actually belong in a school tank. So we'll probably be taking them back to their 180 gallon tank at school. Um, summer's over for them, back to school guys. There's another blue jaw trigger. Love that gray blue throat, yellow finish. Um, just a different looking fish. Active eater. They can get a bit aggressive, uh, especially if you have them paired with a female. The male gets pretty territorial. But they're pretty good about not messing with your uh, inverts or they're not too, um, they don't disturb your tank too much like the clown triggers or some of the other triggers. These guys are pretty chill for the most part. So now, the other fish that we have here at the shop, being that tank missions is a quarantine shop, uh, we have a diamond goby and then we have a flamingi tang. Highly, like, I don't recommend getting flamingi tangs. I don't even know why they're sold. These things should not be sold in fish stores, uh, that little flamingi tang in the back hiding. These fish get way too massive, way too big. There is no aquarium that can hold them unless you're like SeaWorld or like, uh, you know, some type of uh, aquarium uh, that can provide the right space for this fish because even like 2,000 gallons really isn't enough. This fish gets massive. And guess what? We have an Achilles tang. A little nervous to come out. So we have this little guy right here who's been with us for, I'd say about a week and a half now. Doing well, eating. Beautiful color, good weight on him. And then in the 75 gallon, we have this absolute monster of an Achilles uh, tang. Look at the size of this beast. And I love the white underneath his jaw. But this just gives you an idea. This is a 75 gallon quarantine setup that he's in. And he's in there by himself. This just gives you an idea just how big this fish gets. So if you think you got a 100 gallon tank and oh, I'm gonna get an Achilles tang and it'll be all right. No, this fish gets really, really big and honestly should not be in a tank uh, that's super small. You, you need some swimming area for this fish. He's only in the 75 gallon for uh, a month or so, maybe a little bit more uh, to go through his quarantine. But eventually he's probably looking like he might be going into a 2000 gallon aquarium. We have a, uh, a service customer that uh, loves these types of fish. So we'll probably end up throwing this Achilles tang in there, but 2000 gallons, uh, he'll live a happy life. All right, so the other thing we do here is we've had a customer who had major fish disease in his tank and uh, he was losing all his fish very rapidly and he was frustrated, didn't know what to do, gave us a call, we came out and we broke down his tank and we took all his fish out and then we brought them to the shop and we're gonna medicate them here and hopefully knock out whatever they had, whatever was killing them. So I'm gonna show you those fish right now. They're in two 75 gallon tanks. So this actually came from a customer's house. You can see we have a Moorish Idol right there, which you don't see these guys a lot, especially at this size. Uh, that is just <laughs> such a unique looking fish. These guys are definitely an expert level care fish. Very difficult to keep. A lot of people don't have success with them. And I go back and forth with how I feel about it, but uh, this guy's been doing really well for us. So, so good so far. We're gonna go ahead and continue to give them their medications and try to home them, rehome them as soon as we can. Uh, we have a Mimic Tang, a Convict Tang, Sailfin Tang, Blue Hippo Tang. What else is in there? I don't know, what else? I Some Clownfish. All these fish were in pretty bad shape. That Blue Hippo Tang, had some uh, some type of uh, white spot on him, not sure what it was, some type of parasite on him, but that's already starting to clear up. Is that a yellow belly? It is a yellow belly, wow. So that's a yellow belly hippo tang, wow. Uh, but they all look great. They all look like an incredible, uh, their colors are incredible, their, their weight on them is good. They're all eating, we are feeding them frozen, a mix of, you know, mysis and uh, brine, live brine and, and some fresh live algaes too. But they've taken to the medication, the quarantine week one really well. And then the other fish that came uh, with that were this purple tang, uh, blonde naso, yellow tang, which look how big that yellow tang is. And then back there, I think there's something else. There's something else back there. I just can't see it from here. But uh, again, we have some, you can see a little bit of bruising there, something on the naso. So we're keeping our eye on them. We got these two separated in different areas. Everything's sealed so there's no cross-contamination. 
Uh, they are on, I think, day four of their quarantine, day four or day five. Uh, so far, so good. They're eating, swimming. That all can change very fast. So we got to monitor them very closely. I don't like the look of that uh, discoloration on the nasal tank. You can see right there on the left side. Uh, that worries me. Uh, but we'll take all the necessary um, precautions and moves to make sure that this uh, fish does well. But God, Lee, that's a pretty fish. Wow. I used to love purple tangs when I first got in the hobby. I thought they were the coolest, but they're just jerks. They're just very aggressive and mean. And if you run a lot of blue lights, you have a lot of corals. You don't really get to appreciate that purple because the blue light washes it out. So I don't know how I feel about purple tangs anymore. Maybe an fish only system or something with like more aggressive fish. And yellow tangs, I mean, that's kind of a staple of the hobby. And our buddy, the angler fish is getting his opportunity to go into quarantine now. So hopefully he does a good job and then he'll be in his own tank that we'll start setting up pretty soon in the store and he'll be like our little store mascot. Like, look at that face. Just look at that grumpy face. He is not happy being in there. He just wants to be left alone. What do you guys think we should name him? I like the name Garfield because he kind of looks like Garfield. He's real grumpy. And he looks like he's saying like, I hate Mondays. <laughs> and he's got that orange color. If you have any good names, let me know down in the comments. But I could look at this fish all day. Look at that. Look how he walks. It's ridiculous. Also, which ones are his legs and which ones are his arms? <laughs> Ooh, we also got some cool inverts too, guys. We got some anemone crabs. If you have anemones in your tank, flower or bubble tip, I, I think that these guys would make a great addition as long as you don't have anything in the tank that would eat them. I have one in my little Pico tank at home. Really cool. He's always out and about chilling. Speaking of unique inverts, sexy shrimp, one of the few saltwater shrimp that uh, can do well in like nano and pico style tanks. If you want to do a shrimp only uh, saltwater tank, something for like a desktop, these guys are it right here. I wouldn't put any fish though that um, would bother these guys. Make it just a shrimp only tank for the most part, unless you have a really extremely peaceful fish with a small mouth that can't eat these guys. But uh, yeah, these guys, I have a, a tank at home, my little Pico tank, that's a little shrimp tank. Is it weird that I'm excited that we got some dragon's breath in? Like, I'm really excited to take this home and put it in my uh, macroalgae, my 20 gallon macroalgae tank. And that dragon's breath will be going in this tank at my house, my macroalgae, my saltwater macroalgae tank. But I'll be doing a video on that later. You guys have a good one. See you next time.